my bladder was close to exploding. I knew that if I didn't ask to go to the bathroom soon, I'd be in a situation that I didn't want to be in. However, some thoughts were troubling my mind. What if the teacher asked why I didn't go earlier? What if the teacher thinks that I didn't interrupt at a good time? Like I could have asked like when she was flipping the page instead of mid-sentence. What if she thinks I'm irresponsible because I don't know how to ration my liquids? What if she says no? Oh my God, the impending shame doom and rejection that I was scared to to face. The reason why that memory is so ingrained and seeped in my mind to this day is because I was scared to go to, I was scared to ask to go to the bathroom out of fear. Yet I knew if I, I knew if I didn't act appropriately, Again, I'd be in a situation that I didn't want to be in. And I think we all know where the story goes. I ended up peeing my pants. I, it's, it's, it was more than just fear. My young mind at the time, I was five and I had experienced so much pain and suffering already at that age that it made sense to me that in order to protect myself, it's best not to speak up at all, just to avoid pain. But we all know that pain doesn't, avoiding pain doesn't actually mean that you're going to lead a life that's gonna make you happy. Every day I was faced with two choices, the pain of staying the same or the pain of trying to change. For most of my life, I chose the first choice. But then one day I really, really couldn't take it anymore. And like, honestly, I had moments where so many moments where I couldn't take it anymore, but this time it was different. It was like, I was a balloon that like kept filling up with air, but this air was toxic. It was full of fear, frustration, anxiety, depression. And then one day the balloon that was me, it just popped. And then the universe was telling me like, that I'm supposed to be a different kind of balloon filled with love and light so that I could float and fly to the person that I was supposed to be. That was a couple years ago when I was 23. And I was just so miserable with my life because I knew the consequences. I could see the consequences of my passiveness um, my fear of being myself, I knew the first thing I needed to do because it was the number one thing that was always on my mind every minute at that time in my life. It was to break up with my boyfriend who I'd been with for five years. It was an easy thing to do because I never loved him and he was emotionally, mentally abusive, but it was really hard because he was my only friend. And I had attempted to break it off with him each year, but he would always brainwash me saying, I'm the best that you deserve. What are you going to do without me? I'm the one that, I'm the only one that believes in you. So again, I just reached a point where I knew I just had to save myself or I'd be going down, living a life that I dreaded to wake up every morning too, which I already felt like I did. I, I honestly didn't know how I could go on one more day. After I broke that relationship off, the universe blessed me with some friends because to be honest, I've never really had any before because I had social anxiety. I know that other people thought I was weird. I never fit in. And with these friends, we started going out every weekend to clubs and bars. and. I was so happy. I mean, I know that's like artificial, but it felt so good to put on makeup and nice clothes and then have people approach you and want to talk to you. I was like, oh my God, this world of like people and places. And I, I ended up meeting a lot of people. And what I learned from that was a lot of interactions don't work out anyway. And second, 
whenever someone approaches you, you could be anyone you want. So, and to be honest, I know this sounds bad, but like going out, you have alcohol, right? And people say that the true version of yourself is when you drink. And when I drank, I was honest, I was blunt, and I kind of liked who I was. Well, and so I thought to myself, you know what? What if I could be this version of Lillian, but without all the sloppiness of alcohol? So that's what I did. And I ended up, again, sifting through a lot of people. And I was like, okay, do you, you want to talk to me? And you don't know who I am, then you're going to really know who I am. So I kind of used this as an experiment to really be myself. And my honesty was met with agreement or disagreement. Sometimes I was rejected, but I didn't care because I was so happy being honest and open. Fast forward, I've been with my boyfriend now for three years and the type of relationship we have, it wasn't, it was hard to get there. Uh, and it was it involved some, some pain, but I'm really happy at where it is because Whenever I have a problem with him, whether I'm angry or sad at what he did, I bring it up right away. I don't care if it's his birthday, or we're at a romantic dinner, it's Valentine's Day, I do not care. I bring it up right there and then so that he's able to fix it. I do not play games where I let him guess what I'm thinking because with the person that I'm gonna spend the rest of my life with, I do not want to live this kind of life and play a political game. I have already been shutting out my soul for the last 20 years or so, and I don't want to live that life anymore. So if I'm direct in my relationships, that must mean I'm direct everywhere in my life, right? I wish it was that simple, but it's not. For example, if a friend approaches me for advice, I'm not going to tell them, oh, I think what you did was stupid. I think you should do this because I don't want someone to do that to me. I don't judge, I listen and I ask questions to make them think about what they should do. Because I don't like it that I had power taken away from me and I let that power, I let myself not have that power. So whenever I'm talking to someone, I don't wanna take away their power, I wanna empower them. Lastly, there's work, which is an area in my life that I'm working on. With work, you come across a lot of difficult people and I'm proud of myself that <laughs> I see, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you, come across, you come across a lot of difficult people and as proud as I am that I've developed how to communicate with these people, clearly, concisely, effectively. There's some people that just like have this power over me. Like I cannot explain it. And I become like little car kindergarten girl in front of them. For example, I remember the last time that I gave a speech live in person, a Toastmaster speech, and it was before quarantine. It was my third speech. Uh, after I gave that speech, I was so proud of myself because I had only prepared the speech for 20 minutes because what I'm working on is speaking on the spot instead of being prepared because I want to be prepared for real life. I was so happy. I walked out of that meeting so high. I was so proud of myself. I felt so empowered. And then I went into the Herbalife cafeteria and I saw a co-worker and I, of course I said hi and they were like oh hey how are you and then I was usually I just say oh good how are you and I just end the course from there but I was so happy I was like oh my god I just did this Toastmaster speech I'm so proud of myself I'm so happy I I'm just so happy and then you know what they said they said yeah if only you were like that in real life yeah and, and it just, it wasn't just a coworker that I, uh, sorry. <laughs> it wasn't just a coworker that I 
don't work with it every day. It's someone that I... <sighs> yeah, so anyway, I think you get the point. <laughs> And the reason, the reason why that upset me so much was because I already have this insecurity of who I was because of the circumstances that I put myself under. It's like what people think of you, I started to think that of myself. And then it became this negative cycle and it really affected my communication. So when that person said that, like right in that second, like I just had, this whole flashback of like my whole life, all the times that I failed, all the times that people thought I was weird or weak. And it just brought me back to those moments in my life when I tried to save myself every time, but I get knocked down. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to cry. I wasn't even crying when I <laughs> rehearsed this. <laughs> but my point, the point of my speech is my communication style is developing and it reflects how I feel. And as much as I don't want to have my communication reflect how I feel, um, you know, that's just something that I'm still developing. And I know that as much pain as that comment caused me, um, as evidently shown still through here, I know that there were other pains in my life I overcame and no matter what, I'm going to keep on trying and I'm going to keep on speaking up. Madam Toastmaster.